So uh, we recently came out with an album called Hotel TV. This song is called Casualty. I mean, pull up just the main piano riff for a second. Today is our first show of tour, and this is our first tour back since COVID. We had to cancel an entire tour that we had just started right when COVID struck, and we've been waiting eagerly to get back on the road ever since. I'm Gracie Lawrence. I'm Clyde Lawrence. <laughs> we're we, siblings. We've been playing music together since we were little kids. I was literally like three and Gracie was zero. Well, that would make me like negative one. Right. <laughs> since Clyde was literally a baby, he was a musical genius. Like he was playing drums and keys before he could even speak English. <laughs> he was even writing music professionally since he was, I think, like a four-year-old. And Gracie was just born to be a performer. From the second that she could do anything, even stand up, she was just the star of the show, whether that was performing a song or a comedy routine or an acting bit at home for our parents and our grandparents or even on Broadway. She was on Broadway as a kid. It was so abundantly clear that this is what she was born to do immediately. When I was six and Gracie was two, we met a kid named Jordan, who became my best friend and our biggest musical partner. Later, we just started picking up more bandmates. We met our drummer when Clyde was in middle school, and then Clyde went off to college, and he met all the other members of our band. So we were playing tons of college parties all around the Northeast, building a following. We played this really kind of soulful, funky brand of pop music. Musical influences. Aretha Franklin. Stevie Wonder. Carol King. Randy Newman. Amy Winehouse. The Beatles. Um, 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 Randy Newman. Oh, you said that already? <laughs> Once I graduated college and Gracie graduated high school, we just dove in. We started releasing music and we hit the road and started touring the country over and over with this same group of eight people. And slowly but surely, people seemed to like the music and people liked the live show. And before we knew it, we had amassed a really solidly sized fan base around the whole country. And then the pandemic hit, which slowed everybody down, but we did our best to just keep releasing things on the internet, including putting out our new album, Hotel TV. So now we're ready to embark on this tour and hopefully pack venues all around North America, ranging from several hundred people to several thousand people. So this is exciting. I feel like it's a, it's a big tour and um, a, a new step. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so our song Casualty, I had this piano riff for such a long time and I was trying to figure out what lyrics to pair it with. And I was thinking about that expression, it isn't you, it's me. It actually all goes back to an episode of Seinfeld. Not that there's anything wrong with that. No, of course not. But I remember watching a Seinfeld episode where they were talking about how to break up with someone. And I had had some recent experiences where I genuinely felt it's not you, it's me. And I thought, how do you tell someone it's not you, it's me in a way that, that you really mean it? How do you really say that to someone? Um, and so that was why I came up with the lyric, you've heard it all before, it isn't you, it's me. I'm losing the battle, you're just another casualty. <laughs> you're gonna hear a lot of this. I just stuck my tongue into my mask. Really not good. Before you do that, can you take out a lot of the keys from the bass monitor? You can lower the keys in mine as well. Right, we'll yeah. take less keys in the horn wedge too. Come on, guys. <laughs> Let's just practice that. Ready? 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 Let's just try that note, ready? Could I have just the littlest bit of keys back in the guitar wedge? Oh, yes. Oh, like I'm crawling back. <laughs> I'm losing the battle. You're just another casual. Is that a jam? Can we just jam? I think we jam. We, we jam in the band. In the band. It's saying connection fail. That's good. 
We have eight people in this band and they're all super smart, qualified to do a zillion other things as much or more than they are qualified to do music. Eric Krasno, who produced our first album, he said to me point blank and he'd be the first to admit it. He was like, you shouldn't have an eight piece band. And you guys yeah. were kind of telling me about the band and you kept listing more and more people. And as you listed more people, my face got like, oh man. But my attitude was like, this isn't gonna be like eight pieces of dead meat just like sitting on the bus smoking weed while we wait for everyone else to do our jobs. So let me tell you a little bit about each of these people. From the first time I met Johnny, I could tell that this kid was a fucking genius. Johnny has an incredibly important role to play in setting up the shows. He really just has like the right brain and left brain just so developed. I don't know why that makes him one of the nicest people that I know. Sam is more of like the tactile analog version of Johnny's digital brain. He is the car guy, he is our mechanic. He and Clyde go way, way back. That musical relationship is so important for laying the groundwork for the way that the entire band sounds. I mean, talk about consistency. Be just ruthlessly right on the money. So Sumner is originally from Vermont and he's just a Vermonty dude. He's just so in love with life and the world and thankfully for us, he's in love with running our merch operation and he takes so much pride in that. How do I describe Mark? Another psycho smarty. In the van, he'll be reading physics and string theory. And he's so calm and meditative while at the same time, turning up just about harder than anyone. And trumpet is a beast of an instrument. Trumpet's impossible. Jordan is absolutely one of the most talented musicians I've ever met. He's worked harder than anyone to be able to step on stage and effortlessly do what he does. He was there for the genesis of this Lawrence musical identity, bringing specific influences to the table. Jordan is also our tour manager. That doesn't happen where the sax player runs your live business. Like, what do you say about Karsh too? He's really the man for his time and place. <laughs> <laughs> he has an incredibly focused work ethic. The way that he's just absolutely made it his mission to be the best basis. And whenever we need somebody to make a toast or say something funny, it's Karsh. Yeah. The first time I met Gracie, she was 16. This teeny little girl just races through the crowd and jumps on stage and just starts belting her mind out. The talent was, it couldn't have been clearer. To me, she was always a fully formed creative professional as a performer, as a songwriter, bringing this really unique perspective to the band. Volumes have been written about Clyde as an artist, composer, ranger, musician, performer. People that talented shouldn't be normal. When I met him, I just found it so easy to be friends with him. This relentless creativity and this ruthlessly efficient way that he structures his life. Beneath all that is just someone that is like a very, very good person. Being an eight piece band is not a particularly smart financial decision. <laughs> yeah. But it also was just a matter of like, these are our best friends. Right. So it's like when we're touring, we're also like on a road trip which is something that people pay to do and take vacation time <laughs> off yeah. of their job to do. Like it just ingrained in all of us this sort of like the spirit of the band that everyone is going to be involved in some capacity and see where people need help. Do you want to talk to John for a couple minutes? Sure, that'd be fantastic. Shit, that's John. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I trust it. I trust it. Yeah, Clyde, Clyde trusts you guys. If it was to be like cut to me, I would break the fourth. Yeah. <laughs> and have my name in a uh, full house font at the bottom of it? That'd be great. Okay. Now we can start. My band was playing a college show one day. I think the cap was like 3,000, 4,000. These kids got up on stage and just within 10 minutes, most of those thousands of people were like engaged and ready to go. These kids are just nasty. Then they ended up coming backstage. We exchanged numbers and for about a year and change, they religiously would just text me. Oh man, I missed all you guys. So then I'm going, wow, given their talent level and how amazing they are. I was like, they don't need to be texting people all the time. So I'm like, I should probably like see what's up and really sit down in this basement and be like, listen to these fucking songs. Like. Just like it just became like an inside joke. Like if our like van broke down on the side of the road, we'd just be like standing there like kicking the tires waiting for a tow truck and we'd be like, text John Hill. <laughs> Do you want to practice some of these? 
rhythm section, you guys down to just start practicing some of these things? Well, something I've always really liked about our band is that while we take our work really seriously and we take the writing and creation of our original music really seriously, we don't take ourselves really seriously on stage. Yes, we play like lots of personal songs that mean a lot to us, but we also do all these fun, silly covers like the Cha-Cha Slide or the Seinfeld theme song. What is it on the way up? Just yeah, one hit. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah. And then we take it super seriously to make our arrangement of that just as tight and awesome as our newest single. bring such cool elements into their live show that completely show off their personality. I have so much confidence that if I'm talking to anybody in this town about them, if you go see them live and you like music, at the bare minimum you're gonna come back and be like, I had a blast. You're like, you watch them and you're like, oh, I wanna be friends with them. Two stops. Left foot, two stops. You know, in so many ways, I feel like you could say that we've already made it because we're doing what we love and we're doing it with people that we love and we're doing it, you know, with a community that we've built that we love and we're doing it in a way that's, you know, unique to us and super DIY in a way that we love. So I think that the only question is like, cool. How far can we take this without losing any of that?
And you heard it all before It isn't you, it's me When I'm losing the battle You're just another casualty This industry is just so fucked up. Anyway, I want to put on different underwear. So Misogyny and power dynamics. As a girl, I walked away being like, what should I have done? And I think the takeaway is like, there's no right thing for you to do because you weren't wrong in the first place. We are a constant ticking time bomb of a COVID uh, outbreak. <laughs> But this is like early, early stages. This is the first rehearsal of many over the course of this summer before our tour in the fall that will hopefully happen. Don't lose sight, baby, don't lose sight. Don't lose sight, baby, don't lose sight. Isn't it strange having cameras follow you around like a reality TV show? I've honestly completely forgotten. <laughs>